Hey everybody, it's uh, Jason back here again and started a new project and just wrapped it up recently so I wanted to give you guys a chance to check it out. I got a full generator shed built in the backyard right off the corner there. I'm going to go over some of the points on that and what I did here. And basically it all started when I had this hookup put in right here, a little transfer switch in the breaker box right about right there so it's got like an 18 inch jump to go from the from the switch here to the panel and after I got that hooked up we had just a little Honda 5000 really trusty generator but we wanted to do something a little more kind of permanent without breaking the bank so we decided to buy a Westinghouse uh, 7500 with the remote start which is right here it's very right handy um, I'm gonna kind of go over that a little bit <clears throat> So the first thing I did was I trenched a line about a foot, foot and a half deep against the foundation with this conduit. And from there I just plugged her in and it's been plugged in for months. So it runs down the house here. There it is right there. I trenched up with the PVC in there. Put it on eight stones here. There's my exhaust fan. It's pretty far away from the deck and everything. I have an extension cord running from my outlet that I plug in every now and again into the generator itself for uh, battery tender purposes. So I'll pop this open here and we'll I'm going to show you what I got going on. The Westy. She's very temperamental in the super cold starting, so um, it starts, but it's kind of a pain in the ass. So, as you can see, I have the inlet here, and I put a grommet on there. My fan, I wired up. I've got to get a little better wire management going for that. Um, and I've got a Bluetooth thermometer here, and it tells me my humidity and temperature. And on this side, I've got an exhaust tube that runs out, and inside that exhaust tube, and that's actually, I believe, a pellet stove exhaust pipe, and I just kind of made it work and inside that's a cast iron uh, pipe here it's got RTV sealant on it so it doesn't leak any exhaust fumes there just kind of make sure it all goes out and that's my inlet um, vent there and I plan on putting a small intake fan on the inside of the shed just kind of down in that corner to suck air in to get a good uh, push pull on the setup because I plan on keeping this entirely closed when I run it and I just don't want the temperature to get too warm so as you can see it's pretty well ready to wrap uh, like I said I haven't I haven't started this thing in a while so it might take a bit to crank over and we'll just see how temperamental she is uh, What I've noticed I've had to do is turn it over a few times to let it set for about 20 seconds. And then give it another try. And then it usually will start. So let's try it here though. I'll have to find a way to secure that with uh, some sort of like an eyelet bolt or something. A 
I've got it wired so that when the generator starts producing electricity, it will turn the fan on. And I plan to do that with the intake fan as well. So I'll let that run for a bit. I usually like to get it tested you know, once a week or once every other week if possible. I've been slacking on that. But it's pretty quiet over here. And I plan on putting some dynamat in it to kind of deaden the sound a little more. But this is probably quieter than my neighbor's Generac. Uh, I test that every Monday morning. So that electricity pipes over to here and uh, if I ever lose power, I can grab my trusty little remote. And if it's the middle of the night, I can kind of roll over in bed, start it up, and once the generator starts up, I'll go to the garage and I'll you know, I'll make the switch over to the other circuit here and I'll you know, we'll ride it out. And my generator's got like a 10 to 12 hour runtime on you know low load. So uh should last as long as I need it to. And that's about it guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and ask, uh, let me know if you have any questions.